All right. The clouds have not yet cleared away, but I still believe. Also, we need some light in here. Finally, I can see something. Or nothing. And we are ready. Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. It's the 10th of April and tonight I am as prepared as I ever was. Also this blackbird is singing up a storm over there. Quite nice actually. The weather forecast looks great, the clouds are thinning out as expected and my preparations tonight had one major thing in mind and I will show you right now what it is. This is quite a cool box. I bought this box to transport the telescope and now I reconfigured it to carry as much of the deep sky equipment as possible. And this is to keep astrophotography easy and fun and to be able to set up in a flash. And I will now show you what's in there exactly. I always wanted to find some way to transport the scope and most of the equipment in order to have it secured and to be able to set up fast, in case the clouds clear off unexpectedly. The first thing you see in the box is the flat panel. It hides behind the foam padding in order not to break. I use this to make the flat frames in the morning and I usually also transport some sheets of paper to get the correct exposure with these sensitive cameras. Next up is the level. Very important to achieve a fast polar alignment and to increase guiding accuracy. You really want the tripod to be level before hurling a bunch of heavy equipment on top. I usually also have a headlamp in the box, but that one was left in the cellar last night. The power supply comes in the box, one for the mount and one for the ASI Air, which in turn is powering the camera and focuser. The box with cables contains, again, the power cables, the focuser connector, its temperature probe, the mount connector and the power cable for the flat panel. The other cables you can see here are the camera power and USB cable, which will connect the camera to the ASI Air. The ASI Air itself is in here as well. Having such a small computer which can manage your entire night just controlled with the phone or the tablet, it's really a powerful tool. One drawback of basically all the ASA Air models was the Wi-Fi range. I recently learned that you can just buy a bigger antenna and the connection will be much better. I will leave the link to this one in the description. With this bigger antenna I can sit in my room upstairs and still have enough Wi-Fi speed to download the preview images in about 10 seconds. Each image is about 50 megabytes, so that's quite the challenge. And lastly we have the telescope. The camera on the back includes the main sensor as well as the guiding sensor. This little knob right here, at first I did not know what that's for, but I learned that it's the focusing knob for the guiding sensor. Really cool. Directly in front of the camera is the corresponding filter drawer, which was developed by ZWO specifically for the 2600 and higher series. For tonight's image, I'm using the rather new Optolong L-Quad Enhanced Filter, the 2-inch version. I definitely want to make a video about that filter very soon. The scope has its own built-in rotator, really handy. And lastly, for focusing, I use the ZWO EAF Mini. And looking at this setup really makes me smile every time. It's almost like there is something magical. If you look into the deep, dark soul of the scope and get lost in the dark abyss that is space and time, floating through the endless possibilities of what to photograph next. Oh right, the video. This is the first testing night of the ZWO ASI 2600MC Duo. And the first thing to set up in my case is the power cable. And I have to squeeze the power cable through the window actually, through the open window. Because I don't want to leave the door open at night. Power supply. 
Always put on the counterweight before putting on the actual telescope. And then I hope you never have to learn why the hard way. And the main setup is done. I think in a record time because we are prepared. There's a big old cloud over there, but the rest of the sky is cleared. It is. So let's hope that goes away and doesn't come, doesn't get any nearer. I have a very small problem to solve right now. Because from this backyard in this time of year, it's galaxy season. Well, there's just traffic outside. What I would give to live in a quiet place. I have a small problem to solve right now because it's galaxy season. March, April, that time of year you want big telescopes. But the camera does not work with my big refractor. So I have the small telescope out now. That's just a no for galaxies. The pinwheel galaxies out, obviously boats and the cigar galaxy, or even my favorite, the whirlpool galaxy. But photographing those with such a tiny telescope, 300 millimeters, is not that much fun. But I guess I could try it either way if I have nothing else to photograph. The problem is that in this backyard I have only a view to the north. And maybe a little bit to the west. But there's no view of the east or the south. So Cygnus is not yet over there. Summer will be a great time if I can finally photograph Cygnus with this camera. That will, there will be some great images. I know that already. I'm excited for that. But I will probably in this session decide to shoot an actual image of a star, maybe, or maybe even get some small galaxy interview and for the first time test the new camera and the guiding system. So here we go. All right, the setup is done. The clouds almost reached the Big Dipper, so let's see if this actually guides. And I kind of lied to you because I have a rule, never make a video on the first testing night. And I stick to that rule. Because if I make a video on the first testing night, there's always something going wrong. It's astrophotography, there's always something wrong. But this is the second night. And can this guide? It can. Let's take a look at the guide camera. The guide camera right now is also in here. It's basically an off-axis guider. And right now the total error is not to my liking. I usually have it much lower. But I think I would need to recalibrate again. Even though recalibrating on the Big Dipper is not a good idea. But I have no view of the any horizon right now. But look at this. The stars are actually round. On my first try with another filter draw, the stars were awfully egg-shaped and just like, like saucers, basically. The stars in the first try looked awful. I could still guide on them. Guiding works only with the center point, with the center of mass of the star, basically. So having the star slightly out of focus does not affect guiding. It can actually even make it better. But these stars are beautiful and I can guide on them. I can use this camera in the next few months to get awesome images. That's a good result for the first night. Let's see where we can go with this. Alright, first test night is definitely a success. I recalibrated guiding and now the graph is at about 0.8 arc seconds, which is great. So guiding actually works with the setup and since the clouds again started to roll in, I will go upstairs and do something else. Probably play Baldur's Gate and I will continuously check if the clouds go away. And the camera right here I will now set for a time lapse. Enjoy the telescope and the clouds. Night 1 success.